Today, we will delve into an uncommon historical occurrence, women rulers, particularly the female pharaohs of ancient Egypt. Despite the complex inheritance system favoring women in regards to property and titles, the number of female pharaohs remained scarce. Often, royal men resorted to marrying their own sisters or daughters in order to maintain the throne. However, we will focus our attention solely on the women who held power in ancient Egypt. Hatshepsut, one of the most renowned female pharaohs, is among the fascinating figures we will discuss. Stay tuned as there are numerous intriguing tales awaiting your discovery. In ancient Egypt, the majority of women rulers were given the title of queen and served as regent for their underage children. This was the case for Hatshepsut, who was forced to marry her half-brother, Thutmose II, after her father, Pharaoh Thutmose, passed away. Upon the death of her husband and the induction of her 12-year-old stepson, Thutmose III to the throne, Hatshepsut came into power. Although it is believed that she ruled alongside her stepson, she actually removed him from authority and proclaimed herself pharaoh, signifying a ruler rather than a queen or regent. There is still ongoing debate as to how Hatshepsut was able to claim the dual crown of the ruler of Egypt. Despite the fact that women in Egypt had certain freedoms and rights, the society was significantly patriarchal. However, it is believed that her elevated status in the society was influenced by several factors. Prior to her marriage, Hatshepsut was already recognized as the high priestess of the cult of Amun-Ra, and was considered his consort on earth, a title of great importance. She had the unwavering support of the priests who held significant sway in ancient Egypt, which was deeply immersed in religion, magic, and the belief that pharaohs were gods in human form. As a result, Hatshepsut's claim was not contested. Also, Hatshepsut was pure royal blood and the direct heiress of imperial dynasty, in distinction from the steps in Tutmos, who was born from the commoner. What was life like for an ancient Egyptian ruler? For a pharaoh, the representative of the gods on earth, the day began with a hymn lauding the rising sun. One particularly noteworthy aspect of the pharaoh's morning routine was the toilet ceremony, which was a special affair attended not only by family members and servants, but also by aristocrats. After a luxurious gold bath, the pharaoh's skin would be rubbed with aromatic oils and prayers whispered to ward off malevolent spirits. To complete the morning ritual, a wig would be donned and makeup carefully applied. Interestingly, our contemporary beauty ideals are rooted in ancient Egyptian culture, dating back 4,000 years. At that time, a slender and tall physique was admired and fair skin was highly prized among the nobility, as it indicated noble origins. While commoners were toiling under the blazing sun, aristocrats enjoyed a life of shade and moved about the streets under protective canopies. Egypt was a land of peculiarities in its own right. One such idiosyncrasy was the widespread practice of head shaving and wig wearing throughout the population, an act steeped in religious symbolism. Once young men and women reached the age of adulthood, they would shave their heads and offer their hair as a sacrifice to the gods, donning a wig afterwards. While the rich could afford luxurious hair wigs, commoners had to make do with wigs made of animal hair or even ropes. The wigs of nobility sported lavish tiaras or crowns, while those of poorer people were adorned with simple ribbon and pendant trinkets. In addition to wigs, both men and women incorporated makeup heavily into their daily adornment. Men would primarily apply eyeshadow and lip color, primarily as a means of protection from the harsh sun and winds. Later, it became more of a decorative addition. After completing her morning rituals and prayers, Hatshepsut would proceed to the grand dining hall, accompanied by her retinue of priests. Much like many other cultures of the time, Egyptian cuisine was dominated by bakery products. Indeed, there were no fewer than 15 words in the ancient Egyptian language that referred to different types of bread. Alongside bread, beer was the second most important dish on the pharaoh's table. Thick and low in alcohol content, beer functioned as a standalone dish. Roasted meat was also served, considered a rather sophisticated delicacy. Interestingly, despite the fact that the ancient Egyptian civilization flourished along the Nile, fish was not typically served to pharaohs, as they deemed it dirty. Instead, fresh milk was the prime delicacy, a rarity in the harsh climate of Egypt. After finishing her meal, Hatshepsut proceeded to the reception hall, where all in attendance prostrated themselves in deference to the ruler. In this hall, the pharaoh convened meetings with nobility and officials. However, unlike modern-day ministerial meetings, these discussions were often permeated with religious music and dance. 
A fascinating aspect of these meetings was that decisions were reached not only through reports and advice from officials, but also on the basis of the pharaoh's dreams. It was believed that through dreams, the pharaoh could discern the will of the gods and divine the future. This proved to be a highly effective way of asserting absolute power, as no one dared to contradict the gods and jeopardize their favor. It is important to note that decisions based on dreams were not seen as capricious whims, but rather a means of consolidating the pharaoh's rule. As evidenced by the successful reigns of countless Egyptian rulers, including Hatshepsut herself, this practice served as a testament to its efficacy. Her reign marked a period of unprecedented prosperity and growth for Egypt. Hatshepsut made her mark on all aspects of state activity, particularly as a builder. Only Ramses II constructed more than she did, although he disingenuously claimed credit for structures and monuments built by his predecessors. Hatshepsut was also heavily involved in the restoration of the country following the Hyksos invasion. Under her leadership, Egypt began actively trading with its neighbors, with Hatshepsut even dispatching the first expedition in 500 years to punt and initiating a new trading route there. Over the course of her 22-year reign, more than 10 large temples, numerous monuments, and obelisks were constructed. As a result, her rule is aptly remembered as the period when Egypt was restored to its former glory. Once Hatshepsut had organized the state's affairs, she turned her attention to her sacred duty. Following her evening meal, she ventured onto the terrace, sending blessings to all the people of Egypt. These words were broadcast through great pipes, which carried her messages throughout the neighborhood, causing the Egyptians to fall to their knees in holy reverence. One particular incident stands out. During one of Hatshepsut's broadcasts, a criminal was being sentenced to death. However, upon hearing the pharaoh's benediction, the judge decided to commute the sentence. Such an act of violence during what was considered a sacred moment was seen as a bad omen. After completing her duties, Hatshepsut retreated to a shaded area surrounded by sycamores and removed her false beard. It may come as a surprise, but despite being hailed as one of the most beautiful women of her time, Hatshepsut wore a beard. This was because in ancient Egyptian culture, the pharaoh represented the god Horus and as such could only be depicted as male. Therefore, upon becoming pharaoh, Hatshepsut was required to don male clothing and attach an artificial beard during official ceremonies. Some depictions of Hatshepsut with a beard wearing tight-fitting women's clothing have survived to this day. Later in the evening, Hatshepsut will once again head to the bath for a cleansing ritual. Once she has purified herself, she will enter the chapel of Osiris where she will disrobe and lay the god to rest. She will then seal the doors of the chapel before retiring to her own bedchamber. Throughout history, many female pharaohs have been identified with depictions of women wearing false beards discovered both before and after Hatshepsut's reign. The earliest confirmed female pharaoh is thought to be Sobigniferu, who governed during the mid-18th century BC. While there are references to earlier female rulers of Egypt, there isn't enough evidence to confirm this with complete certainty. There were as many as 13 female pharaohs, although the extent of the power held by many of them remains a topic of debate among historians. The number of women in positions of authority in ancient Egypt reflects the high status afforded to women, even when compared with contemporary times. It's incredible to consider that over 3,000 years ago, before the rise of feminism, women had the right to choose their own spouses, divorce, and remarry. Land ownership passed from mother to daughter rather than father to son, while ancient Egyptian laws provided equal rights for women. Women had access to education on an equal basis with men with even ordinary women managing property and a significant number of women practicing medicine. These facts suggest that women in ancient Egypt have a high level of education. The ancient Egyptians revered the three great mothers of the world, embodied in the forms of Mont, Hathor, and Isis. The concept of balance and harmony was paramount to the culture, with Osiris and Isis wielding justice at the beginning of time. According to Egyptian mythology, when Isis bestowed gifts upon humanity, equality between men and women was among them. Despite the controversy surrounding her reign and her decision to sideline her stepson, Hatshepsut proved to be an exceptional ruler, leaving a lasting legacy in ancient Egypt. After her death, her stepson Thutmose III took the throne and continued the path of revitalization she had set for the kingdom. However, towards the end of his own reign, Thutmose III carried out a campaign to erase many traces of Hatshepsut's rule going so far as to alter or deface her image on public monuments and temples. 
This act was seen as something of a curse upon his own legacy. Fortunately, Thutmose III's erasures were not entirely successful, and archaeologists have been able to reconstruct the story of Hatshepsut's remarkable life and achievements centuries later. That's all for today, subscribe to the channel and stay in touch.